G'day fans, and we're back talking about the Mandalorian. Oh my goodness, how exciting is all this? It's Dags, it's MPS, and today we're believers, because the episode is The Believer. Make of that what you will. MPS, just quickly, do you believe in The Believer? What did you think of it? I feel like a bit of a monkey. No, I'm a believer. Um, but <laughs> I did have some belief and I still have some more faith to come. How does that sound? I think we'll discuss Very good. That. I love the fact that when we started off, we ended up in the Imperial Empire's pick apart. <laughs> if you want to build a TIE fighter, just go to pick apart and just pick out all these bits and have a whale of a time. How good is that? Um, yeah. But, uh, of course, yes, it was the reintroduction of good old uh, Migs Mayfield, who was from the episode The Prisoner in the last season, a nice little link uh, there. And uh, I must admit, I did find it quite interesting when the car just turns up and says, yeah, we're going to just, like, take you out here. We have no idea how that even happened. She said, I had to jump through all these hoops to sort of get him out, but he's, he's just out. It's just as simple as that. It's like, if only it was that easy in the cop shows. <laughs> there you go. Why don't you make, a, make of all that? Well, it wasn't just that he was out. He was out and about, really. He was like the old crushing the rocks on the side of the road sort of thing, you know. Um, I did yeah. like the fact that he had a steering wheel as a tool that you sort of saw that and you went, oh, someone's just ripped off a steering wheel from like a Tarago or something. Yeah. And, you know, they're just using that to add a bit of stuff and you know, jackhammering away and whatever else he does with it. Yeah, exactly right. Lacking a few sort of laser sword. They just need some laser blasters to sort of clean all this stuff up <laughs> rather than doing it the old-fashioned way. Um, so clearly in between the last episode and this episode, uh, enough time has passed for Boba Fett to look at his outfit and go, you know what, I'm really sick to death. The old Sarlacc stains are still there and it's been touched by Jawas and Cobb Vanth and all these other infidels. So he's given it a spray paint. He's, he's like repainted the entire suit. I thought he would have given it a nice glossy sheen and, you know, put it like, it's like, um, speed stripes on it or something, but it's pretty much back to how it was or how it would have been originally before all the bumps and the scrapes. What do you think of all that? Good old Fed, he's fixed up. I thought when he walked out, I thought, hang on a second, he's gone to like a auto store and grabbed a can, <laughs> you know, as we say, there's nothing you can't change with a can of spray paint. Exactly. Um, however, there's still a dent in his head, which I thought, why didn't you just knock that out? You know, you could have just <laughs> easily gone and done that. Um, you know, why? Only thing... the, you know why? Because the panel, but like the spray paint is open, but the panel beaters were shut. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I don't like about his uniform is the black robes or skirts yeah. underneath. It just yeah. doesn't work for me. If you're going to bring him back, why not just have the full suit and make him look like he was? And then that would make far more sense. Yeah, good old Fed's got himself a new paint job. Make of that what you will. It'd be because, you know, in when we saw him in Empire, he was all scratched and beaten up. It'd be very curious to see at some point if he does get a scratch on it. You know, it's like, okay, we're heading down, down the path of how he used to look uh, once upon a time, which is uh, kind of cool. So the Imperials are still mining stuff, right? These Imperials are everywhere. I mean, it's just amazing. And I had to do a little bit of reading and research thinking, why are there so many of them? They're all over the place. They've got bases here and ships there and all the, all the rest of it. And of course, we're in the Outer Rim. The New Republic just hasn't reached that far yet. And uh, in the Star Wars canon, uh, the Imperial Empire in the core worlds is all like long since signed the Imperial Concordance, which is the, the big uh, thing saying, yes, we're not going to fight anymore. But in the Outer Rim, it's a little bit of a different uh, situation because I would have thought if you've got these big ass bases floating around, the New Republic would have just flown in and go, hey, you can't have that. We've got to shut you down. But clearly they haven't gotten to that point just yet, which kind of explains uh, what's going on. And I did actually like the fact they made a reference to the term Imperial Remnant. They actually mentioned it on screen and that harks directly back to the old uh, expanded universe, which is now Legends, uh, because that's what that was called. Uh, and I thought that was actually very in intriguing. And of course, that's effectively what it is. Although in the storyline, they're saying they're just there's pockets of them all over the place rather than as one big harmonious group. So I thought I'd just mention that. Uh, the fact that they're on the Outer Rims, maybe the, the Republic are taking their time going planet to planet to try and shut all this stuff down. And they're just, there's probably hundreds of thousands of planets and, you know, yep. six fighter jets or uh, yep. ships to go and, and deal with each planet. And it takes time. Um, the fact that they've got to take an entire road crew to go and get this stuff that's highly volatile back and, and crossing what looks like running the gauntlet with pirates, why wouldn't you have an armoured guard of ships yeah. and stuff around it? You just have two guys in it and they all get blown up because all these pirates on skiffs turn up. It's like, hang on, you know the problem. You've got all these people sitting at the base. Why not send them out? Like the TIE fighters come right at the end just as they hit the bridge and you go, 
That makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. These TIE fighters could have been following them in the entire time. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, they did know that the pirates were attacking the, the craft and, and destroying the, the stuff and killing all the dudes. So you are right. There's a whole lot of spare puppies back. Then. Unless all the guys said, nah, no, nah, we're not going out there. There's pirates out there. We'll stay at the base because it's safe. So, uh, But that whole sequence, it's it's kind of funny because you're looking from all these different perspectives, right? So Pro Din, our, our lead hero, Din, can't take his helmet off, right? And he's got to go, uh, how do we fix this situation? He's, be- he's willing to bend a few rules to try and save Grow Group. Yep, okay, it's cool. So he gets dressed as a stormtrooper. And the fact that uh, Mayfeld gets to talk about the transformation, it's actually, Mayfeld shines in this show. I mean, he mm. outstrips everybody. Even outstrips Din, our main lead. You know, his dialogue, the way he presents himself, the things he's talking about. He's saying all the things that we've been thinking about. He's like, oh, so you got to wear the helmet all the time, eh? Don't you ever take it off? Da, 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 da. It's like, we've been saying that for ages. And I actually quite like that because he's actually voicing the view of the audience and it worked very, very, very well. And the fact that it was a complete about face that as a stormtrooper, uh, which I thought the uniform was quite good inside the juggernaut, that's something new and a bit different. He's out there fighting the pirates. And of course we're going, oh, from the, an outsider's point of view, if you're watching from the side of the road, you'd be going, look at that stormtrooper. He's grouse. He's kicking the crap out of all these pirates. Uh, and, of course, he wasn't a, pir- uh, a stormtrooper at all. And I thought that was actually quite interesting. So they've completely about faced the whole thing. And when the so- TIE fighters save the day, you're going, woohoo for the good guys, which are technically the bad guys, which are kind of the good guys. So I don't know. Make it that what you will. But, uh, yeah, I thought the whole thing was actually very, very interesting to sort of watch. Uh, look, I, don't get me wrong. I did like the fight scene. I did like yep. the all that, but it became repetitive. You know, you had one that comes up and you take the thermal detonator and you throw it down, you do this, and then two more come and you get rid of those guys and then five more come and you go, yeah. what's the deal? Like, are these guys sitting on the side of the road just waiting for you going, well, it's a quiet Tuesday. Oh, hang on a second. There's three more of them. Let's go follow them and and, and fight this this um, thing because we haven't blown up enough stuff today. Mm. Um, yeah, you're right. It was interesting. The, the thing that bugged me about Din sitting there while... Mayfield was asking all those questions. He's not even saying a word or looking at him or doing anything. It's like he could have just said, you know, so you got to wear it all the time. Yep. <laughs> you know, that would have been a far more, yep, yep no, whatever. Just just sitting there in silence was a bit annoying, you know. Yeah, I guess that was intentional. Um, prior to all this occurring, they're all uh, our heroes, which are now got this whole band of them now all of a sudden. Uh, trying to work out how to get into the base. And they're all saying, well, you know, who's going to get recognised? I can't get recognised. I'm on this. And I love Boba Fett's line saying, yeah, his face will be recognised because, you know, all the clone troopers <laughs> all look like him. <laughs> that was a nice little throwaway gag. i got to admit, that actually kind of worked rather well. But, yeah, the action scene um, was extremely well done. And I do agree with you. Suddenly, you're like, when you think all the pirates are gone, a whole new batch turn up. And you go, hang on, why didn't these guys just turn up in the first place? Unless they were somewhere else. And they came over. I did actually think, and I think this was intentional, that when they're in the juggernaut and they're driving through the village uh, and Din looks out the window and you see all the villages on the side there, it looked identical to how it would have been in the Vietnam War with the American troops herping through a Vietnam in a sort of south or north Vietnamese town and all the little kids and all the the locals just watching them. I reckon that was deliberately intended to uh, replicate that. And, of course, from the villagers' point of view, they're looking at the stormtroopers as the empire, so not Din in the in the outfit and I thought oh, that was that was quite quite uh, intriguing so very good uh yeah they're, they're called the Carth and Chopfields so there you go they've even got that sort of Asian sort of uh, name um and of course uh what was really really cool is when the pirates did attack and of course you know Din the superhero gets out and he's bashing the shit out of all of them but of course he's not wearing his best car so he's actually getting damaged and injured and I thought for the first time in the entire series since the end of the first season Din is actually now getting a bit of a belting and I thought it's about time because he's been the hero. That's great. But at some point, even your hero has to cop a smack in the mouth. And it was just like, I mean, it wasn't anything major, but at least he was under uh, a bit of stress mm. and a bit of duress. And I really thought that was quite good um, because, yeah, he completely forgot he was wearing a completely different suit. What do you make of that? Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting because the first time he put his arm up to guard, mm. smashed the gauntlet completely and you went, oh, that's right. You're not wearing your, your good outfit today. You're wearing someone else's yeah. costume. Um which, which brings back to Mayfield's line where he's putting on the boots. He goes, yeah. oh, this thing smells and the gloves are still wet. It reminds me of costuming days where you go from one, one event to another and you think to yourself, I've just come out of this. It's soaking wet and I've got to put it all back on yep. for an appearance. So that was very clever. Um, yeah, he did sort of take a bit of a beating, which was good. I, there, was, there was too many opportunities, though. Like at one point, you would have thought that the, the pirates would have backed off because they would have just kept seeing the next one blown up. And you think to yourself, 
hang on a second, he must be, or there must be something stopping them. Um, the the theory of, of strategy in that sense is once a few of you get beaten down, the rest of you tend not to sort of continue to jump in forward, but I don't know. Well, you've got to remember that in, in the previous attacks on the other juggernauts, they were all successful. So maybe they were just weight of numbers. And who knows, maybe just pure fanaticism. We've got to destroy this thing. Because I know if once it gets to the base, they're going to be in a bit of a pickle. So, you know, just jump in, lads, and away we go. So, uh, and they would, may potentially have been like shocked by the fact that the stormtroopers were actually fighting back and, or the stormtrooper and actually winning. So, yeah, you kind of, you don't really know how, how natives necessarily think. So you kind of go, you know, cut them a bit of a slack in that regard. Mm. Um, I do like the fact that he, he ran out of he ran out of uh, of ammunition. Then he goes, yeah. now what? Oh, I'll just throw the gun. Yeah, yeah that's the old you load your weapons, man. Yeah, exactly. Scenario. Um, so we get towards the base, and for the first time in you know, like a thousand million years, stormtroopers can actually shoot straight, and Tie fighters actually hit their targets. It's like, oh, it's about bloody time. And uh, we get to the base, and like. As you said, there's all these variations of stormtroopers come out, and including the shore troopers. And I thought, oh my goodness, we haven't seen them since Rogue One. And even then, it was like, who are these guys? What do they do? They're, they're like the biker scout guys, but they're in, they're in brown. And they're here in this thing as well. So clearly, the costume department said, let's just chuck some of these guys in. You know, those outfits haven't been used for like five or six years. Put them in. Let's, why not? As you can. And of course, they get into the base. Uh, and it's like everybody's cheering for the heroes. Yes, yes, our heroes survived. And they're doing the saluting thing. And the thing I found interesting is I have to really stretch my memory to think, when did they ever salute in Star Wars, especially in the Imperial Empire? To the best of my knowledge, they never have. So this whole thing of saluting, uh, I didn't get where they came from. So maybe it's something they've just introduced. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, that, that didn't make sense to me at all. I'm not sure. Some Star yeah. Wars nerds will have to sort of figure that one out for me because I didn't get it. But yeah, right. I saw the saluting and I thought that was completely weird and completely wrong. Uh, but if you notice very quickly when they were driving in, on when they look on the right-hand side, they're all saluting with their left hand. I yeah, think I noticed that too. Yeah, yeah. It's a I think that's a good image because it was, it was wrong. Yeah. Uh, and then everyone else is saluting right. And it's like, yeah, I think they've just flipped the image for the sake of yep. a yep. visual effect yep. for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then they're walking in and saluting and half saluting and not saluting and yeah, it's like it's a bit you of know. So didn't when Din gets in there, um, and he sort of salutes and goes off to the to the um, terminal. Mm. When the other commanding officer that is watching him sort of comes up, he should have you know saluted or whatever the case is. They both should have continued saluting, but it's sort of like an on and off again. Type yeah, of thing. you kind of can't do that. It's either everywhere or not at all. So it, it, that seemed to be a bit unusual. And, and yeah, because, you know, normally it's just all pats on backs and all this sort of business. But uh, anyway, it leads into the more important thing, or well, two things, actually. One is to say, yes, there's still a lot of dot guys running around and, you know, they're sort of just doing the best they can of, under what they've got. So the stormtroopers aren't as shiny and clean as they would be normally. They're a bit on the dirty side and these all these dudes wandering around. They're obviously like a little bit of lost sheep. But it leads into the scene of the bistro with the terminal. And... It's kind of funny because, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mayfeld says that he can't go in because he's going to get recognised by, by the officers. So Din's got to go in. And, of course, the thing has come up about, he's got to, he gets in there, he's got to take his helmet off and to get the scan, right? Now, cinematically, it was great because I think we had discussed either on this show or some of our other shows that at some point you've got to see Din's face, Okay. Poor old Pedro's been buried under this thing the entire time. You've got to see his face because he can act with his face. You can't act with a helmet. You can only go so far. And he took the helmet off. He had a moustache. Don't ask me why Din's got a moustache, but, you know, it's the style you have when you're a Mandalorian. And, and that was great. And, of course, the problem, with, the problem with that is his face gets scanned and the system says, yes, you're good to go. But how does the system know who he is? He should be going, uh, unrecognised face. You're not in our database. So... Oh, I don't want to shoot down a great idea, but it was like, uh, and someone else has picked up on this as well. Think, hey, that should have just gone error, error, error. You're not part of the system. You can, otherwise, you could just be anybody. So, um, yeah, that was a bit cockeyed. But the fact that he got his helmet off and actually got to act with a helmet off is about bloody time. And uh, we had said that that had to happen at some point, and now it has, which is very, very cool. What do you think? Yeah, look, as soon as he did that, it sort of I sort of thought, well, maybe he's spent some time in the Empire and he's got his thing. But at the same time, yeah. if he did and he he ended up missing in action or whatever the case is, it should say, oh, welcome back and yeah, give some know. sort of number. Yeah. Or name it's it's a, a plot hole because they couldn't have had – the show would have gone forever if he had got scanned and go, sorry, you're not recognised and alarms go off. He's got to get the information about you know, got Gideon ship. So they've just bypassed that uh, little conundrum altogether. Um, 
Yeah. Well, they, they could have bypassed all of that by having the other guy just walk in and go, well, look, it was 10 years ago or so. He probably wouldn't remember me. There was 300 million people that got killed at that, um, mm. that uh, battle. I'll just walk in. And then it should have come up with, he should have done it. I reckon that should have been a, a better scene that way. Uh, and Dean should have had to have taken his helmet off when they sat down at the table. That would have been a better scene, I think. Yeah, I, I, I see. I don't necessarily agree. I think the fact that he got it off when he did, and it worked out well for the story. So that introduces the character of Valen Hess, the Imperial officer, right? Now, straight away, uh, I don't know who the actor is, but I have recognised him. He always plays a bad guy, right? So you knew straight away he was going to be a bit of an evil, evil dude. And they had this the scene around the table. Uh, and even though Din really doesn't say much at all, um, and, and Mayfeld does most of the speaking, it was probably one of the best written conversations in the entire show, right? So Valen Hess is talking about how they've uh, um, enacted uh, Operation Cinder and Mayfeld's trying to get through the whole story of who they are and where they are and how he fit into the scheme of things. And ironically, we've got two brand new characters who happen to have the best scene in the entire show and the lead actor of the entire series barely says a word. How ironic is that? And it was a really, really good sequence. And it does actually put everything in a completely different perspective, saying, well, yes, even the Imperial Empire has people with mothers, fathers, brothers, cousins, cousins, all that sort of stuff. And no one ever thinks of them. And we see this in the shows and the movies all the time when, you know, Death Stars are blowing up and Star Destroyers are blowing up. All the thousands of dudes who die, it's like, yeah, well, what was their story? They're not all necessarily evil. Uh, they're just there sort of doing a job. So... Uh, yeah, it was actually, I think, one of the really, really uh, better moments of the entire series, and uh, a lot of people have sort of commented on that. So the whole thing with the Operation uh, Cinder, just to sort of quickly explain what that was about, it's actually first introduced in the Shattered Empire to uh, comic book, and it was designed about saying if the Emperor ever died, that uh, all the supporting worlds that supported the Empire would all be destroyed using weather satellites. So it's almost like the scorched Earth policy, if you will, on a planetary scale. The idea being that he didn't want the Empire to outlive him, which ironically, as we know, it did. Uh, and so that was where the idea came from. And so a lot of Imperial sympathisers and supporters were destroyed in the process. And of course, that's what happened with this place, uh, Burn and Con. So, and ironically, that actually was first introduced in the Uprising game, uh, mobile game from a, a few years ago. So that, even though it wasn't really covered off in the show itself uh, as to what exactly was going on and why the Empire would be destroying itself, that was a reason. And of course, hardcore fans would know that, but casual viewers would have no idea as what's going on. So Valen here saying, oh, we killed 20, 30,000 uh, Imperial supporters kind of doesn't make any sense when you're looking at it from uh, that point of view. What do you reckon? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's it's a tough one. Um, I liked when you saw Mayfield and the, what was his name again? The Valen Hess. Valen Hess. He was sort of sitting back going, oh, we did all this great stuff. We we conquered everything and we lost a few people. Big whoopsie. And, and you can see Mayfield getting really angry about mm. the guy. Yeah, hang on a second. Yeah, you killed a lot of people without really needing to sort of thing. And that's, it was nice to see. I thought it might have been a bit where if they had a stood up for whatever reason, then, you know, maybe Dean would have grabbed him and said, look, let's just get out of here. But for him to start shooting and blow him, blow the other guy across the room was actually quite good. Hmm. Uh, so you're right. So you end up with the fight scene, right? And it's like, okay, what's going to happen here? And of course, our heroes are all going to get away. We've got our Kara and uh, Fennec is out there with the sniper rifles and they're picking these dudes off. You know, it was kind of cool to see some long distance sniper shots going off uh, and our heroes will get away once again without a scratch. And uh, uh, we kind of saw that coming, but it was actually a, a good action scene. And of course you get to see stormtroopers fall off high things once again, as is always the case in these shows. They get to the roof, the slave one picks them up and everybody's happy. So uh, it was all good from then on. Uh, that was about the only predictable stuff of the entire show. And, of course, Mayfield then decides to blow up the Rhodesi or Rhodesium stuff, the mineral. But I looked at it and I was looking at it carefully thinking, okay, he was clearly an Imperial sympathiser and he worked with the Empire. I think his plan was to try and destroy the mineral, not destroy the entire base. And I don't think the entire base was destroyed. So it's not like he killed all of his own people because if he did that, he's then just done what Valen Hess was bragging about earlier saying we killed all these guys they were all heroes and then mayfeld shoots the thing blows it all up and if all those stormtroopers and all those shore troopers all carked it he's then just replicated exactly what hess just did uh so um yes um and towards the end of course one of the great things a lot of people commented on this is when the slave one is flying away the seismic charges make a reappearance from attack of the clones absolutely awesome how good is that and as soon as it came out the back of the ship you just knew those tie fighters yeah guys you're gonna have a date the office kids <laughs> what do you reckon about that hey 
So um, that was a that was a nice sort of um, throwback, you know. And you sort of because if we if we remember correctly, Slave One when he did that the first time when Django was flying was a different yep. color. It wasn't yep. the the Fet colors. No. Uh, so people have probably forgotten about it. That comes out and you go, we, you're just waiting for that. We. Boom. <laughs> And you thought that you guys are gone. As soon as that comes out, you guys are just toast. Yep. Uh, So Cara lets Mayfeld go. We sort of saw that coming a mile away. So, uh, yeah, that's all well and good. And who knows, maybe he'll reappear at another another, um, another scene or another episode. And then we get on board the ship with Moff Gideon and then uh, Din pops up on a hologram Mm. and effectively repeats what was said last season uh, and reverses everything around where Moff tells Din uh, that he's coming for the kid. And now it's the complete reverse. And I thought, you know, it, it's very cute that he does that. Din tells Moff Gideon, yep, hey, the kid me- means more than me than, he- than you'll ever know, and yada, yada, yada. But by the same token, I'm thinking, you've just announced that you're on your way. It's like, you know, it's like your calling card. And the, you think Moff would be going, uh, yeah, right, uh, uh, there's a few dudes coming to try and sw- uh, snatch Brawl Grogu, who doesn't not make an appearance in this entire episode for the first time in a long time. Um, it's almost like, Mate, what are you doing? You're setting yourself up for failure. And, of course, we know the heroes will win, right? They could have 10 million stormtroopers, regardless of their TKs or not, and uh, and Din and co. will still win, uh, which will probably be the final episode. But, um, yeah, I did think that was kind of a bit dumb. You think the surprise attack would be the way to go rather than saying, yep, we're on our way, get ready for it. <laughs> What did you make of all that? Uh, just silly, silly, silly storytelling. Don't tell your enemy you're coming. You know, it's like it's like in the Austin Powers film where he says, "Oh, aren't you going to, you know, make sure he's he's guarded properly?" No, I'm going to leave with one inept guard, and I'm going to tell him the whole plan and all that sort of stuff. It's like, <laughs> we know you're coming for the kid. He doesn't need to know because now you're right. You know, he could turn around, Moff Gideon could turn around and go, "All right, so we got one guy coming for us. Let's just have fifty ships guarding my ship." You know, and and you know, I know we didn't see Grogu, but we did see Fett, so we did see something green this episode. Um, <laughs> Saw some grass, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I think what's next week, the last episode of the season, which means that all hell should break loose and big bada bing bada boom should occur yeah. as well in whatever yeah. form it is. But there should be a one itty bitty little ship that Moff Gideon's got and 50,000 ships surrounding it going, we're protecting you. And then you go, now come into that and see how you can rescue a child. Yeah, it was uh, pretty silly uh, in the grand scheme of things. So anyway, we're going to need to rate this episode in uh, some helmets there, uh, Boba Fett helmets, no less. So what do you reckon, MPS? How did you find the believer? Look, I think there was, again, this series is becoming predictable. We know what's going to happen. There's no real surprises. I think last week was probably the first big lot of surprises with Fett and, and Slave One coming in and announcing all that. Um, the fact that she let him, Kara let him go at the end, we knew that was coming. You know, he wasn't going back anywhere because he did good. Um, look, I thought it was a, a fairly average episode, so I'm going to make it easy and just go down to three helmets. Very good stuff. Um, from my point of view, it looked good. It sounded good. There was a little bit of good action there. Din did actually have a little bit of a, you had to struggle a little bit. Um but as a few people have picked up, it was a filler. It did not move the story at all, uh, even though there's a lot of flash and dazzle. But ultimately, you look at it and go, okay, all you have to do is just find out some information. Okay. And that's all we got at the end. And even now, we still don't know what that information is, uh, where the ship is. Um, but it was saved by the character moments. And for the first time in probably this entire series, there were some good character moments, even if the character moments weren't our lead uh, characters. Um, and I really liked that the whole Mayfeld shined, shown, uh, shined, we'll go with shined through this entire thing. The discussion with Vale and Hess, as I said, the fact that Din got to take his helmet off and actually perform as himself was great. And I really, really dialed into that. And that really worked for me. And I was really, really happy with it. So um, normally I, I agree with you. I would have rated this uh, further down the list as well because of the fact that nothing really happened story-wise, but because of those character moments, uh, I decided to give it four helmets. I originally had a four and a half, but I thought, nah, uh, no, nah, we'll bring it back to four just because of the fact that it's like it wasn't all perfect, but uh, it certainly looked great and was uh, very, very entertaining. And, of course, it now leads into, as we just said, the final episode of next week, and we can all take guesses as to what's going to happen. Din will live. Grogu will be saved. Moff Gideon will probably die. And right at the very end, Grand Admiral Thrawn will make an appearance. And there you go. Fourth season, 
here we come. So uh, a bit of a no-brainer, right? Whether Ahsoka will come back or not is anybody's guess, but we've got our little try uh, heroes. And uh, and you can almost bet your bottom dollar all of our heroes will get through. They won't even have like a drop of sweat, right? They'll just go bang, 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 bang. Here's the kid, pack up, go home, blow up the ship. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Cop a seismic charge in the middle of Gideon's ship and that's the end of that. Game over, end of season. What do you reckon? I think that's pretty close. We may even see the, the re return of... Um... Uh, Bo-Katan to help out because, you know, if you've got all these ships and, and you want to make a good season finale, you bring everyone in. Everyone yep. comes to the party. So yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Yep. let's just hope it's not a 32-minute episode. Yep. Yeah, well, exactly right. It'll probably, yeah, exactly. It'll be over very, very quickly if that's the case. So speaking of that, we're going to have to nick off because we're going to get ourselves psyched and pumped for the last episode of the season. Oh, my goodness gracious, the Mandalorian's coming to an end. <gasps> It's very, very cool stuff. So in the interim, we'll see you in a few days' time. Uh, Christmas is coming, and what better Christmas gift can you get than the Mandalorian finishing with a lot of explosions and the kids saved and everybody's happy and the bad guys get their comeuppance. Oh, how good is that? All right, yeah, so in the interim, make sure you keep on warsing on. What else can I say? And we'll see you in a few days' time. Okay, bye for now. Yeah. Very good.